So today I'm going to show you what ruler work is and how I use it on my quilts. And this is my Soul Shine quilt and I have it basted and ready to go. I'm going to be quilting on my um, Bernina Q20. It is a long arm machine, but it's a sit down long arm. So everything I do here, you're going to be able to do the same way as your uh, domestic machine. I'll just have a little bit more space on this machine. That's the only real difference is the space. I'm gonna show you how to do ruler work mixed in with um, swirls and stuff like that. So for the ruler work, I'm using this to make my straight lines. And this is a, uh, see it's a quarter inch thick. That way it won't slide up under my foot. It's by Creative Grids and, and Angela Walters and this one's called Slim. And it's a pretty handy ruler. It's got a little bit of some grippy back there, which is very helpful. I'm gonna be using it against this foot, and this is a ruler foot. So if you are gonna do ruler work on your machine, you'll you'll need this uh, this foot to work with any any quilting ruler that you have. Um, you know, free motion quilting ruler, I mean. Uh, and then I'll just be bumping them up beside each other. Um, to keep things um, straight and it, I won't be in danger of this ruler sliding up under the foot. This foot will keep me safe from doing that. Um, so my plan, my plan is to do the star blocks and this part first and then fill all this white space in with free motion quilting later. But I'm going to start out in the very center of all my blocks. I'm going to do just some swirls and some petals right here and then I will outline the whole star center. Then I'll outline the star. I'm going to come back and put some little um, drapes at all these points. Then I'll move on to outlining this outer part of the star. And when I say outlining, I'm talking about stitching right in the ditch. And that's what I'm going to be using that ruler to do. And then after I have the whole thing outlined, I will come back and uh, stitch right in the middle just straight lines right in the middle. Once I have uh, my these stars done, I'll also be doing these. And for this, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch right across like that and then go around it. And then after, after all that's done on each block, I will come in and fill in all this with swirls and petals and things like that. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna start off in my very center-ish block. Um, it'll, uh, I just always start in the center when I'm doing, when I'm jumping from block to block to block. And also because I'm jumping, it's gonna be a little bit more tedious than if you're just doing an all over design because I'm having to keep cutting my thread and things like that. So it's a little bit more tedious than that, just so you know. All right, so I'm gonna put my needle in and grab up my bobbin thread. And like I said, um, if you need a, a starter video, I have one of those on the blog. All right, Let's stitch in place just for a few minutes. Oh, also let me get my, let me get gloves on. All right, here we go. And I'm just going to do um, just something swirly in the center.
right, so something like that. And I'm gonna get myself to a corner. Let me cut this. All right, so here's where we start our ruler. And I think I usually like to, I like to hold with my left hand when I can, but sometimes occasionally I have to hold with my right. All right, so you might not can see it, but there is a little line engraved in the very center of this foot. And I'm gonna make sure that uh, engraved line lines up with my ditch. And I want to stitch, you know, right there in my ditch. And I'd rather it not show. If it shows a little bit, I'm not gonna be worried about it, but I prefer it not to show. So that's what I'm going for. All right, I'm gonna take the ruler and I'm pushing up against this foot as hard as I can while maintaining uh, where it's at. And just to keep try to keep things lined up, the, the, the ruler has got all these markings and I'm just finding a spot like the tip of this flying geese unit is on one of these lines and I'm gonna make sure I line up the other geese with that same line so that it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's we're going at a straight angle. If I get off a little bit, I can correct it. But I'm gonna hold this ruler in place. I'm pressing down and butting up against that foot. And then I'm gonna take this hand and this part of this hand and move the quilt. So quilt, so ruler work on a sit down or domestic machine is much harder than it is on a long arm, but we still wanna do it. So let's, let's, let's do this. All right, yay, and that did pretty good. So then we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna, I'm putting my hand on it like this, and then like this. I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm using the markings on the ruler to, uh, to get it in place, and I'm also kind of going by this right here. Does it look straight? And then I'm gonna, we're gonna go sideways. Line it up again this way. And then this way. Mm. All right, put my ruler aside and then I'm gonna do these um, I'm gonna do this drape real quick, which is gonna look like this. This really highlights the star points. I use it a lot. We're just going from points point all right and then I'm gonna end it right up at that point of my of the star get my ruler back and we're gonna go again so let me get let me get lined up perfectly on that ditch and here we go we're gonna outline these star points this way is a little bit trickier I can actually turn my quilt this way make it easier for myself
You know what? I think I'm gonna not turn it. So a little off when I didn't turn it. Um, for me, the secret to getting it right is to start exactly in the ditch because sometimes you find yourself a little bit off of it. So just get it, taking a minute and getting it right in the ditch when you begin uh, helps out. I'm gonna stitch a couple times in place and then cut my thread. And you can already see how well it defined um, that uh, stitching in the ditch from the rest of the quilt. I mean, it just looks really outlined, really defined. Uh, but this next part is gonna really make it look great. And then once we get the free motion in the, in the, in the background, it's gonna really pop, especially when we wash it, the crinkles are just gonna come alive because we're gonna just gonna have so much uh, with some light quilting versus some heavy quilting. All right, so we're gonna move up here. Let's move right here. All right, oh. a few in place. And then we're gonna outline this outside star. Let me snip these threads real quick. a little bit, correct, and then get back on it. There's no wrong way to do this. We just kind of do the best we can.
when I first started doing this, I was, I know I don't, I don't find myself really good at this, but I feel like I'm decent at it. And the first time I did it, it was just a gigantic mess. But somehow, after I washed that quilt, it was beautiful. Um, so, and then I, it just got a little bit easier, a little bit easier every time I did it. So I do recommend if you're uh, really bad in the beginning, just keep going because you are gonna get really good. And once you wash a quilt, it, it looks good pretty much no matter what you did with the quilting on it. Uh, I get impatient and then mistakes happen. stitches in place and then cut my thread okay so um, I've stitched this stitch and I've stitched this stitch this is a little bit too much to leave unquilted um, I just don't think it would look good so what I'm gonna do is put you know a line down the center of it all the way around and the way I um, I use the ruler to know where to begin. So I wanna begin about a quarter inch from this edge and I wanna begin in the center. So I'm gonna use this ruler just to figure that out a little bit. All right, so right there and Oh, that's pretty good. Grab up my thread. I'm gonna stitch in place just a little bit. All right, and then we're going to do this. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take the ruler and all the ditches I'm lining up with this line here. So you can see those little stitch lines, I'm putting that right on my ditch and that's gonna be my guide um, for staying in the center. Hopefully I won't get off too bad. All right, this is the only part that's tricky. Actually staying in ditches is pretty simple but when you stray from the ditch and put lines in other places, it gets tricky. And it all has to do with, you know, having everything in the right place. So I don't actually think I've got my needle. I'm going to go up just a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to stop where I think I should stop and then redo. And I stopped in the wrong place. So let me go back a few stitches. All right. And I'm using this line again in my ditch to know that I'm in the right place. Let me snip these threads before I move on. And then we're gonna do it again. And I'm really pushing against that foot. All right, pretty good on that one. A little bit more. All right, pretty good.
too far. Just come back down a little bit. These little tiny mistakes I try not to worry about. You'll make yourself crazy if you think you're not gonna make any mistakes. sometimes wants to shift towards me, but I just have to keep pushing it. Oh, I'm way off there. All right. Try to like backstitch a little bit. All right. Cut my thread. Ah. All right. So I've got one star done, five stars to go, and then five, yeah, five, six of these to go as well. All right. So that is, you can already see how it's going to puff right in there. It's going to look good. Let me show you, um, let's show you this. This is what I'm calling the sole block in this quilt, but let me show you this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do the outline first. Um, there's no easy way to do this. One of your lines is gonna have um, some double stitching on it, but I just kind of let it be and then do it anyway because I can't figure out a way to do it where I don't have to backtrack. I'm using um, micro filter thread. It's a pale silvery color, which is gr actually really great for stitching in ditches because the silver kind of just blends in with with any color I put it with. So, let me snip these. I really like um, silver thread for that reason. It doesn't take away, it doesn't add to anything, it just kind of disappears. And this thread is a hundred weight thread and I just have to adjust my attention a little bit, but that was okay. All right, so we're gonna go down the middle. I'm gonna go back up here. When, when I'm going in these spaces where I don't have anything to gauge where I'm at, um, I'm gauging this distance and I'm just eyeballing it. So if I get off, I have to, you know, correct. Pretty good. And then we'll go right across here. All right. Let me cut my, oh, let me stitch in place a little bit. Cut my thread. All right, so that's how I'm doing, you know, both of these blocks. I'm gonna finish up all of my blocks, just bouncing from block to block, cutting my thread, um, just dealing with that. And then I will show it to you before I move on to um, all of this background part. Okay, I am back. I actually broke that up over a period of two days. <laughs> Um, but every star is quilted and every uh, one of these little guys is quilted and I've gone ahead and swapped back to my regular uh, darning foot and um, now I'm going to just free motion quilt um, all the background sections. I usually when I'm doing it all over I always start at a corner um, so um, we're gonna do all over the background um, so I'm just gonna start at this corner Drop my needle and pick up that bobbin thread. And then I'm just going to do um, swirls, um, elongated curls, and some um, uh, pointed petals. And I feel like when I was doing the center of these stars that I'm a little off. Uh, something's, something's 
either hung up or not so smooth as it normally is. I'm not sure if it's the change of thread or if it's um, me accidentally pressing something on my machine. Um, but something feels a little bit off, so hopefully I'll get that straightened out. So let's let's get going. Let me, let me just get this thread out of the way. wide open spaces um, so I'm just going to quilt away Um, so there's no rules and I'm just kind of wandering about the quilt trying to keep this keep all the spaces full so I went all the way to the edge of this so I could close this area and I'll catch all this part right here uh, when I come back around um, but but this is what it looks like and I'm just swirls curls and um, these little leafy things and so there's not really any hard rules just kind of wandering around
started off a little rocky. Um, it's been a, it's been like a week or so since I've a free motion, so I feel like I've started off rocky, but I, I'm 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 getting into the flow and it's starting to um, feel a little bit more smooth. I don't know why <laughs> little breaks from it always cause um, you to be a little uh, uh, rusty. Yeah, rusty's the word I'm looking for.
texture this is creating and it's looking pretty much um, as I wanted so I found the groove <laughs> And um, I'm just going to keep doing this until um, I'm completely done. And that, and I'll show it. I'll show you this when I've got it all wrapped up. All right, so I am all done here, all quilted up, and um, pretty okay with it. Um, I think it's gonna make some really nice texture. There's some, there's some wonkiness a little bit, but. Once it gets washed up, all that will disappear and I will be left with just nothing but crinkles. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.